Welcome to my Chanel. A place that brings interesting and dramatic stories. Hope you have a fun experience. Please listen to the next story. I had just come back from my usual weekly business trip and planned to spend the evening with my wife of four weeks. We dated for six years before marrying. We met up with some of her new friends for drinks. During the night, she got quite drunk, picked a fight with me and stormed out of the bar. I tried to follow her, but lost her in the crowd. Worried about her safety, I contacted the few people in the group I knew, but none of them knew where she went. After searching for an hour, I decided to go home. It's worth noting that she had a history of blacking out since college, so this behavior wasn't entirely new. Unable to sleep and somewhat upset, I went to her car early the next morning hoping to talk to her. As I was approaching on foot, I saw one of her new male friends dropping her off at the parking garage. From where I stood, I couldn't tell if they were sharing a friendly hug or a kiss. A cold shiver ran down my spine. I wish I could say I was angry, but it felt more surreal than anything else. He drove away and I casually called out to her. She seemed surprised and immediately started explaining how she lost her phone and how some of the new friends found her drunk on their doorstep when they returned from the bar. To avoid worrying me, she asked the guy to drop her off so she could get home early. Without any evidence to the contrary, I accepted her story as plausible. However, in the following weeks, I noticed she became increasingly secretive about her actions, especially with her phone. In what I believed was a trusting relationship, I had never felt the need to check her phone. One night after she had gone to sleep, I felt compelled to browse through her text messages. At first glance, everything seemed normal. However, by pure chance, I typed the letter verses into the Safari browser, and it auto-populated with multiple search queries related to identifying venereal diseases. It dawned on me that she had visited her OBGYN earlier that week. The thought that my newlywed wife might have been having unprotected contact with this guy who had attended our wedding made me feel quite uneasy. Nonetheless, I kept my silence and pretended to be oblivious. The next day, I consulted a close friend who was a computer programmer about recovering deleted text messages. He gave me a bootleg program that could retrieve file containing deleted content from the iPhone's trash bin. In a somewhat ominous tone, he warned. Be careful what you wish for. That evening, after she had gone to sleep, I retrieved the erased data. Upon my initial scan, I discovered a plethora of texts exchanged between her and him. Discussing various physical acts, including one a whole act in a workplace bathroom, and getting turned on by one of his roommates watching them through an open door. Pill used during the day and coordinating meetups around my schedule. I began to shake and rush to the restroom where I dry heaved for 15 minutes, utterly shocked. After collecting myself, I returned to our bedroom, woke her up and told her that I wanted to discuss my fears of infidelity. After allowing her to lie to me for 10 minutes, I presented her with a highlighted stack of text messages. She immediately burst into tears, claiming that she had been under a lot of stress, that it was purely physical and that it had only been going on for a few weeks. She promised to end it the following day. Regarding the venereal disease, she admitted to having unprotected contact with him. And said. Of HIV tests the following day, both of which turned out to be negative. So I had that small consolation, feeling embarrassed by the brevity of our marriage and the thought of explaining it to my family. I told her that I would attend counseling for one month. And if I didn't see any improvement, I wanted out. After a couple of weeks, I discovered that they were still seeing each other. I exploded with anger and told her to move out by the first the month. It's challenging to fully convey the mix of anger, sadness, and confusion I experienced throughout this situation. As an epilogue to this whole ordeal, the only positive moment I I experienced was receiving a call from her father a month she had moved out. He was puzzled as to why his daughter was still living with them and why we hadn't attempted to reconcile. He thought it might be typical early marriage nervousness. I politely replied, it's over for good.
I don't think it's my place to discuss it further. Eventually, she will explain what happened. He pushed for more information mentioning that he had just paid for a $50,000 wedding and deserved some answers. It struck me that I had asked for his permission to marry his daughter, so I should end things on a man-to-man -man note. I agreed to meet with him and my mother-in-law that evening. After some small talk and evasiveness, I finally revealed that she had cheated and that her drinking had escalated significantly. I expressed regret and gratitude for everything they had done for me. As they probed further, I shared the cold hard facts without embellishment. By the end of our conversation, they both hugged me and said repeatedly, We love you, we don't blame you, and we are sorry. We did not raise her to behave this way. As I left, I had one of the most rewarding moments of my adult life. Some background. I grew up in a humble trailer park, while my wife came from a wealthy background, enjoying expensive hobbies like horse riding and world travel. Consequently, her mother had always carried an air of superiority over me. However, in that moment, as we said our final goodbyes, I saw a fleeting thought cross her mind. I can't be certain, but I believe she considered maybe the boy who was never good enough for our daughter is actually too good for her. A few years have passed, and I've come to terms with the experience. I'm now a stronger and happier person. I've even had a few serious relationships none of which have been marred by lingering trust issues. All right. That was a fun story. Now let's move on to another exciting one. Stay tuned, and let's dive in. Story 2. I've been married for 33 years. I'm 55 years old, and so is my wife. We have two kids and two grandkids, and we care about them a lot. Here's our backstory. We met in the 80s at a nightclub where I worked as a bouncer. We went on a date, moved in together after two months, and got married two years later. Our life was good, balancing work, play, and raising our children. I went from a physically demanding job to a more sedentary one and gained a lot of weight. It got to the point where I couldn't even finish having closeness due to asthma attacks. We tried various ways to improve our bed life while staying faithful to each other. I'd been cheated on in the past, so we had a strict no infidelity rule. We deeply loved each other and thought we'd spend our entire lives together. Being married for 33 years is a significant milestone. And my love for her grew stronger with each passing year. After 20 years of a lackluster bed life, I made a choice to lose weight. Over the course of two years, I shed 80 kilograms, 176 pounds and had a tummy tuck. I know it might sound superficial, but I had three main reasons. First, I wanted to be around to see my grandkids grow up. Second, my health was a priority. And third, I wanted to reignite our bed life, which we successfully did. Over the last two years, we've been intimate about three to four times a week, and my wife thoroughly enjoyed it. I could tell because her body never lied. We were in a place where we could enjoy life together. She still tells me she loves me, and I feel the same way about her. I've never been unfaithful to her. And as far as I know, she's never cheated on me. It's just one of those things. Well, that was until three days ago. She went on a vacation with her two sisters traveling out of state with them. I didn't have any concerns about this because I trusted her. However, she knew that infidelity was a deal breaker for us even after 33 years. We had an open and transparent relationship. We had apps on our phones that allowed us to see each other's locations. Not because we didn't trust each other, but for safety reasons, we didn't hide our phones, and we both had access to our messages and emails. Trust was never an issue. When I lost weight and started looking better, I did receive more attention from women, but I always ignored it because I was happily married. My wife mentioned that she felt a bit insecure now that others found me attractive, and she had gained some weight. However, I never worried about it because I love her regardless of her appearance. I tell my wife I love her every day and remind her how pretty she is. Our closeness is great and I wish we had worked on it more in the past. But one day after work, my wife called me very upset and asked if my sister-in-law had talked to me. I said no and asked what was going on. 
not expecting what she was about to say. She confessed that she cheated on me and had an intimate encounter with another man. She felt really sorry and didn't know why she did it. I was shocked and heartbroken. I sat in my car feeling numb as she explained that she and her sisters had been drinking, and a married couple had joined them. They kept drinking until 2 a.m. And her sisters had already gone back to their room. When the bar closed, she said she was really drunk and went to the couple's room to keep drinking and talking. They kept complimenting her, saying how attractive she was and how lucky her husband was. The man started making physical moves on her, and the wife encouraged them both. They promised her that no one would find out, and they told her to just enjoy the moment. She said it felt like she was acting completely out of character, but she ended up being intimate with the husband while the wife watched. The next morning, she woke up in bed with both of them asleep and quickly went back to her own room. Her sister found her, and she told her everything. Her sister said she had to tell me about it, or she would do it herself. She cried a lot as she told me all of this over the phone and begged for my forgiveness. I felt emotionally numb and couldn't understand how she could risk our lives like this. She cried non-stop saying how sorry she was. How much she loved me and how big of a mistake she had made. I told her it wasn't just a mistake. It was a choice. After that, I hung up, turned off my phone, and went home. I sat in a chair trying to figure out what would happen next. I couldn't stop thinking about losing the woman I thought I knew and all the years we had spent together. I grieved over the loss of the future we had envisioned together, and the impact her decision would have on our family. My familiar life had come to an abrupt end. For the past two days, I isolated myself, but eventually, I turned my phone back on. Unsurprisingly, I found a multitude of messages from her and her sisters. The final message indicated that she was en route home. My children had also tried to reach out as their mother had. Them and assuring them that I was coping as best as I could. However, I explained that I would be leaving home temporarily to work through my emotions before her return. I requested that they refrain from informing her about my whereabouts as I needed time to come to terms with the impending end of our marriage. I just sent a text to my soon-to-be ex-wife, notifying her of our impending divorce and expressing my desire to cease communication. The emotional pain is overwhelming. And I never imagined that our love could disintegrate so rapidly. Update. I might ramble a bit, but I have a lot on my mind and my thoughts keep jumping from one thing to another. Just to clarify. Our previously dormant bedroom wasn't completely lifeless. But in comparison to the last two years, it felt that way. My previous active job was in the military, but due to an injury during a training exercise, I transitioned to a desk job followed by a medical discharge. Afterward, my wife and I ventured into a small business together. Now before discussing things with my wife, I had a lengthy conversation with my sister-in-law and her husband. Interestingly, the story my wife initially confessed to was quite different from what she later told me. My kids were really upset about what happened. And they're just trying to support me. I've talked to them about it, telling them that despite being angry at their mom, she's still their mom and their grandkids' grandma. She loves them. And what she did to our marriage doesn't change that. My wife and her sisters cut short their vacation and came back home. I left a note for her saying she should pack up and stay at her mom's place and she did. But here's the kicker. The real story is even worse than what she first told me. Even though she confessed when she was caught, she still didn't tell me everything, which isn't surprising. She spilled the beans to her sister who then told me. Here's what she said. She loves me and our marriage. She never expected to cheat but she blames it on our active love life over the past two years. It got her wondering what else was out there. She felt this way because she used to think she was the more attractive one in our relationship. But now she thinks that's changed. Her insecurity made her seek validation from someone else. She insists it was the first time, even though she thought about it as a fantasy before. She was trying to satisfy a curiosity and had no plans to tell me. 
Interestingly, the couple she hooked up with were our customers from another state, but I've never met them. She talked to them a lot on the phone. They met up for drinks, but her sisters tagged along so they pretended not to know each other until the sisters left. She did have some drinks, but she wasn't too drunk. They had all planned this before their trip. My wife's coming over to talk later, and she's really worried about it. But I already know what I'm going to do. She made the choice to cheat, and everyone will deal with the consequences. The truth about her cheating is devastating. But it just strengthens my decision. I didn't cheat. I didn't make her lie, and her fear of losing me in our marriage is valid. I don't care how bad she feels. She's the one who did this, not anyone else. But now we all have to deal with the fallout, and it's the end we'll have to figure out our new lives. Update. I had to talk with my wife yesterday. After so many years together, we both found that we don't sleep very well without the other beside us. It's been that way for decades. However, last night was the first night I had a very good night's sleep without her there. When she walked through the door, she looked terrible. Sleep deprived, guilty, scared, and red eyed. Normally, my heart would break, and I would comfort her, but not this time. I was sitting at the table and she started crying again and rushed in for a hug. Blubbering about how she messed up and is so sorry, etc. I put my hand up, told her not to touch me, and instructed her to sit down. She complied. I asked if she wanted a coffee as I was going to make one and she accepted. So I made the coffee and returned to the table. Her eyes never leaving me. Her, thank you for the coffee. I interrupted. Hold on. Let's do this my way. Please just answer my questions and listen. This isn't about you. It's about me and our marriage. I told her straightforwardly. At this point, we're done. You've made your choice. And now it's time for me to make mine. I had already made up my mind, but I wanted to extract some honesty from her. I thought that if she believed there was a glimmer of hope, she might be more forthcoming. I continued. I've spoken with your sister, which is true. Her, you did? I nodded. Yes, I did. But I added a fabricated detail. I've also spoken with the couple involved, which wasn't true. But she didn't know that. I felt a strange mix of emotions, a weird happiness that she was so upset, sadness for our situation, and a hefty dose of disappointment and anger. But above all, I remained calm, and this seemed to unsettle her the most. Honestly, it felt like I was conducting a job interview. I questioned her how many times did this happen. She replied, physically once and twice on video chat. I instructed her. Explain how it all went down. She began well, it started with a business conversation that turned into flirting. Then over a couple of months, when the wife said it was okay and got involved, it escalated to watching them have closeness. She added, I told them it had always been a fantasy of mine to have closeness while someone watched. And they were all for it. Her voice cracked as she admitted. I knew it was dangerous, which made it more exciting for me. She seemed ready to offer excuses and justifications, but I cut her off saying, I don't want to hear your bullcrap excuses and justifications. I had to wait about five minutes until she could regain her composure. I even got up to get her some tissues. She stated they met as arranged. And after her sisters left the bar, they headed straight to the couple's room. I asked if she ever intended to inform me and she replied, no. Viewing it as a fantasy she could fulfill without cheating again. I challenged her and inquired if she had cheated over the past 33 years. She firmly denied it. I emphasize that now the number of times she cheated didn't matter, whether once or a 1,000 times the outcome remained the same. The only ones who would suffer if she was lying were our children, her relationship with them, and our grandchildren. I expressed disbelief but it was irrelevant at this point. She then realized I had no intention of reconciling after her infidelity. She begged me to work on our marriage. Willing to do anything, even allowing me to have affairs if I stayed, promising never to cheat again. I cautioned her about what she was proposing, saying she had already compromised her self-worth. I made it clear I would never cheat in a marriage. 
and if I were with another woman, it meant we were separated with no hope of reconciliation. This was the furthest thing from my mind. When she tried to take my hand, I informed her I'd never touch her again. I don't judge anyone's lifestyle. It's their own business, and I understand that people engage in affairs and open marriages, etc. However, we didn't have such an arrangement. Trust and respect were shattered when she planned to be intimate with another man. I'm a pragmatic man, and I felt a sense of relief I told her we'd handled this situation as smoothly as possible. She interpreted it as a sign of hope for our relationship, but I clarified that we were finished. And I meant it. I informed her of our separation, and she became emotional. I wanted her to leave my house so I contacted my children for support. They advised a swift resolution. Upon my return, she apologized and suggested reconciliation. I proposed a 5050 split of our house and business granting her the car and keeping the truck, motorcycle, and cats. I set clear communication boundaries. No contact unless related to the kids or grandkids. I intended to initiate divorce proceedings through lawyers. I left the house so she could sort herself out and take some more of her belongings then I went to my daughter's place. I spent a few hours there talking with her and playing with my granddaughter. When I returned home, she had already left. And I must say, I had the best night's sleep without her that I've had in a long time. Now I'll see what the next six months or so bring. Update. She's still staying with her mother and I've been preparing the house for sale. We've been in this house for 20 years, so there was a lot of stuff to clear out and get ready. I've managed to get it done, and we've put it on the market. Fortunately, there are a couple of eager buyers, so I'm hopeful it will be sold in the next week or two. The business has already been sold too. Thankfully, one of our clients wanted to expand, and I accepted the offer last week. Settlement will happen in about a month. Divorce is already proving to be a pain in the neck. In my area, a 12-month one-day separation is required before divorce filing. With an additional four months for uncontested cases. Property settlement occurs after divorce. I expect no disputes over joint possessions if she keeps signing sales contracts. My son had one unpleasant conversation with her. My children are adults with their own families. I advised my son not to let her decision harm their relationship. My daughter, despite feeling ashamed, supports her through the breakup. She's honest about the consequences. My wife believes I'll eventually forgive her, but I've made it clear that our many years together won't change my mind. When she came over to sign the real estate contract and expressed her belief that I would change my mind that I still loved her and that she would be a better wife in the future envisioning us growing old together with this as just a bump in our marriage. I was taken aback. I simply told her she was utterly mistaken and that her expectations were wildly unrealistic. She had lied and cheated in the worst way possible engaging in intimate acts with another man. The idea of being intimate with her again was unfathomable. She mentioned that she regretted it and didn't know what she was thinking. Emphasizing that it wasn't even enjoyable. I told her to stop talking as I had no interest in hearing whether she enjoyed it or not. The fact remained that she had done it, and there was no chance of reconciliation. I wanted nothing to do with her and eagerly anticipated moving forward with my life without her. I believe she is in deep denial about what's happening. And she no longer has any control over my actions, nor is she entitled to it. Her deceitful actions dismantled a once loving marriage. And she knew this would happen before she cheated, so she can't claim to be naive about the situation because it is indeed happening. Interestingly, I've been receiving attention from other women lately. I'm not interested in pursuing any relationships at this time. It's reassuring to know that when I'm ready, I'll have plenty of options. My soon-to-be ex-wife even became angry when she learned that women we know have come over to visit and bring me dinner for conversation only, of course. She told me she wants me to get it out of my system, and she'll be waiting. It's truly baffling how messed up her thinking is. The only thing I want to remove from my system is her. Update I've always been a pragmatic man with strong family values, which has made the transition to my current situation relatively easy.
I've chosen not to let my emotions lead me into self-pity. And I refuse to play the victim because it doesn't lead anywhere productive. After selling the family home and the business and dividing assets equally with my STBXW, I had enough to buy two small units near my grandchildren. My son and daughter live in different states with their partners and children. I did this because I wanted my own space while staying close enough to visit. I'm still working. A former business competitor offered me a part-time role, which I accepted. This job allows me to have plenty of free time to start enjoying life again. There were a couple of weeks when I didn't have much to do, so I hopped on my bike and went on rides with no specific destination, just stopping for coffee and sightseeing. In the evenings, I'd stop at pubs and enjoy a few drinks before heading out the next day. What has surprised me the most is how the casual dating scene with women is. And I must admit I'm enjoying it. Over the past two weeks, I've connected with a few women with no expectations. Just looking for fun and companionship without emotional baggage, I'm pleasantly surprised at how well I'm feeling. Many have asked if I reached out to the couple my wife cheated with. The answer is no, and I have no desire to do so. Her choice to cheat was hers alone, and they mean nothing to me. The best response to a cheating partner is indifference and focusing on your own life. While I still think about what happened, life moves on, and I'm concentrating on myself. My soon-to-be ex-wife, STBXW, seems to believe that once I calm down and miss her, I'll take her back. I've made it clear that our marriage is over with no chance of reconciliation. I no longer care about her actions or who she's with. It's not my concern. Likewise, what I do has no impact on her anymore. My daughter told me her mother is still in denial, feeling sad and embarrassed, and wants me to take her back. I told my daughter that won't happen because her mother is only regretful and embarrassed because she got caught and is facing the consequences of my decision to leave.